Okay, hi everyone. Um, I mentioned yesterday in class that uh, I would try to put something together for uh, for some information on site analysis. That's site analysis that we're going to take a look at tomorrow in class. And again, this this presentation was designed for uh, Larch 332, which is a planting studio you will take uh, a couple years from now in the spring. Uh, so it's what you're going to see here is probably more complex and more complete than certainly than what we're expecting for Friday. And you're not you don't have to create a super finished board. This is really working information for you. But I want to run through this so you can get an understanding of the difference between site inventory, site analysis, how program fits into all that. And there's a checklist in here that you can feel free to use just to give you some ideas of things to think about that you might want to include. And we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the graphics styles and methods that you're going to use. And then also I have a few boards there in the upper right we'll zoom in on later that are uh, really great examples of a very polished and finished site analysis, inventory analysis. Again, we're not asking for that, but we'll give you some ideas of some of the types of site-related information that uh, you might want to think about and how you might represent that graphically as well as through text. So let's take a look at an overview then of what we're going to do. So the first thing is you're really answering questions with a site analysis. We're not just asking you to do this because we're trying to give you busy work. So you need to think about what do you need to know where do you find it and how do you communicate it? Those are the three questions you should think about as you're going through this process. So one of the big confusions usually when we ask students to do it every year it happens, uh, a site analysis is basically what we end up with is a site inventory. So, and that's where you have to start, but it's not a site analysis. So let's take a look at that. Then we're gonna talk about how program is important. So, you know, there's lots of factors uh, on every site that you could look at, but some of them aren't relevant to what you're trying to do. So uh, uh, an inventory and analysis is always based on your understanding of the program requirements. What is the design trying to achieve? And that also gets back to your, a little bit back to your design intent and your big idea for, for what you're going to do. And then finally, site analysis then really is about you know, who cares? So what? Uh, you've got this information about the site, but what we're trying to do get, is get you to think about how that information is going to inform your design. Uh, and that helps us also to say, okay, did you address these factors of uh, sunlight, of slope, of wind, of views, or orientation of slopes, things like that. Okay, so site analysis is making a judgment about what you see out there in the site. It's not simply just recording what's there. And what we want you to do is come up with some convictions. Uh, your judgment and your next door neighbor's judgment might be different. You, again, because based on the program, based on your idea, certain factors of the site may be more important to you than to someone else because of the way you're approaching the design problem. So it's good to have a good general overall understanding of what's happening on the site, but you have to develop your own convictions about what's really important uh, for you to help achieve a really good design that addresses the site issues and implements your, your vision of a design intent and design concept. Okay, so let's go back here and take a look at site inventory then. You know, we start, this is a site over on West Campus, but, you know, it's similar to yours. It's basically there's a quad with four, build three buildings around it and a parking lot on one end. So we've got this blank slate. What do we need to know about it in order to uh, proceed with our design? We have to respond to what's out there, right? It's not, we're not designing in a vacuum. So the first thing we do is inventory, and that's really just a list. Um, it's descriptive, not judgmental. So we locate where's the existing vegetation, what type is it, um, you know, what condition is it, landforms. So even when we were out there yesterday on the site, uh, you would probably judge that as a fairly flat site, but uh, because uh, thanks to some ice out there, uh, as I discovered, uh, that little bit of slope makes a difference in terms of how your feet hit the ground and your stability and that kind of thing. So even if you don't know exactly what percent slope it is, just describe what type, is it steep, is it flat, is it moderate? Um, you know, what are the ranges of slopes from steep to flat? And uh, structures, the building that's there, si existing sidewalks, and by structures, I mean anything that's man-made out there, not just the building. Uh, sidewalks or structures, uh, benches, paving, anything like that uh, that you want to include. And then, of course, we're not really going to deal uh, on this project because it's a little more hypothetical with utilities. But certainly, if you were going to be planting things, you need to know if there are underground electric lines or water lines and things like that that might come into play. Okay, so an inventory is just a list. And the more thorough <coughs> excuse me, your list is, uh, the more you have to work with when you start making judgments from your analysis. 
Okay, so here, and you can come back and refer to this, and I'll put a link to this Prezi um, on Angel as well, so you can just, you don't have to go through the YouTube video in order to get to this. But uh, we kind of look at two categories. The first is biophysical, so things like topography, drainage, microclimate, soil, vegetation, habitat, probably not much out there. Local context um, in terms of vegetation and habitat. So those are kind of those biophysical things that have to do with uh, what the site conditions are, how plants grow, what the soil's like. And again, for what we're doing, a lot of those probably aren't super critical. Um, we're not going to make you deal with drainage. So understanding that basic flow of water is good, but uh, and the basic topography. Microclimate, for example, that probably is a good one. Prevailing winds, site-specific microclimate. Uh, you know, being more protected up by the building, more exposed out toward the parking lot, those kind of things. Which, how does the sun track across the site? Where, what slopes will be sunny? What slopes will be shaded if you start designing your landform? So that's probably an important one uh, in this category. Then we have cultural infrastructure. So what, what are the uses? How is the site used right now? What are the current circulation patterns, for example? Example. Architecture and structures, again, uh, definitely take a look inside the building, as I mentioned, showed some pictures of that yesterday, so you can understand how the building was designed itself and how that might inform what you do outside. Vehicular circulation, you know, where cars are moving, not just from, uh, in this case, we're not addressing that in any way, but you might want to address in terms of where people are being dropped off, the noise, the visual impact of the parking lot out there. Pedestrian circulation is certainly a really important one. Um, Roots, hierarchy, volume, entry, exit. Uh, wish it was nicer weather. You'd go out there and sit for a while and see how people come in and out, but uh, probably people are moving in and out pretty quickly at this time of year. Um, <clears throat> we're not going to focus on things, utilities like lighting and storm drains and steam lines and so forth, but certainly spatial qualities. It's pretty open right now, right? So you feel, how do you feel when you're out there? And sensory impacts of things like views, uh, no, noises, and, and even odors. So you can refer back to this list. Again, we're not expecting you to check off every single thing on here, but it gives you a good idea. If you haven't thought about some of these things, you might want to uh, think about that. And sometimes, it, again, it's just simply noting them on the plan, saying, yeah, here they are. These conditions exist. So how about graphics? Generally, we're going to use some bold, conceptual, diagrammatic symbols and graphics and labels and notes. And there's some examples in here of just, uh, you know, here's sun, you know, rises in the summertime, rises in the northeast, sets in the northwest, tracks in the southern uh, part of the sky. And so you can tell what areas will be in sun and what areas will be in shade, which direction shadows are being cast. And again, we're not, uh, you can write that information out, as you can see here, uh, which is great. But graphically being able to show that, you can look at that with a single glance, understand where the prevailing summer winds are, where the winter winds are, and that kind of thing. Uh, another great example, just bold, strong graphics, and you can do these by hand with markers and pencils. You can use the uh, some of the diagramming brushes that I put on Photoshop uh, and the tablets, however you want to do that. And I think this example, uh, a lot of you, I think all of you were probably out taking some pictures. So if you show view arrows to say, look, this is what the view is over here, this is the view over this direction, and be able to include photographs and integrate those with your site analysis with a little note of where the picture was taken from, which direction you were looking, and uh, then a little description of what that is. Another one, a little larger scale, again, showing kind of knolls or high points, special locations with the asterisks and view sheds that emanate from those places. You see the arrows for vehicular circulation and maybe indication of where uh, particular slopes are or things like that. So it's always a bold, strong, kind of freehand graphic, diagrammatic graphics. Uh, now this one's a little more controlled, uh, and you'll see this on the other board too, but includes photographs with descriptions and, uh, you know, some plan drawings that show different things color-coded. Same kind of diagramming you just got done doing for Project 1. Okay, I'm going to skip through these because this is basically the problem statement for the planting um, studio project, but right here is where you could take a look at the program. We've given you a list of things to, that you need to include. Uh, they're in the, the uh, problem statement, so look through those and say, okay, based on the things I need to do, which factors of the site are important to me? Okay, so once you get that inventory, um, then you can start thinking about 
how that's going to impact your design. And basically, inventory fuels analysis. It's not the end. It's just it's the beginning. It's the raw data. It's the raw material, the raw information that you're going to process and make some decisions about. So it uh, also you know, helps make sure that your creative ideas are appropriate. Design is about being creative, but it's also about problem solving. So if you come up with the most brilliant idea for a design, but it doesn't address the site issues, it won't work and it's not going to be a success. So when we get to analysis then, it's we're really talking about being diagnostic and conclusive. So statements like existing vegetation needs to be preserved here. Steep slopes limit pedestrian circulation. Service area needs to be screened from walkway. Entrance area needs better enclosure. So those those are kind of um, these kind of conclusions and judgments, value judgments basically, uh, of the inventory conditions that exist. But you're saying, okay, this condition exists. This is how I need to address that in my design. I hope that's clear. So those are just some typical examples of the kinds of things that you would state in an analysis as compared to there's existing vegetation here. Okay, so what? Do we, does it need to be removed? Is it diseased? Uh, do we need to preserve it? Should it be integrated with a design? Could it be moved to a different place on the site? There's lots of things that could happen with that existing condition, and you just need to think about that and address that in your analysis. So remember, diagnostic and conclusive. You're making a value judgment about an existing condition. You're not just describing that it exists. So then conclusions lead to opportunities and constraints. So that's where all this goes. You know, you can write all this stuff out and say, well, I think these things are need to be addressed in a certain way. This is a problem. This is an opportunity. And that's really what we're doing. So at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is come up with a list of opportunities and constraints that the existing site conditions provide. Um, you know, if you were building an entrance road, designing where an entrance road should be on a particular piece of property, then you might be concerned, you would be concerned with, uh, for example, where you connect to the existing road and whether what the, the um, view angles are like at that intersection. Would you, want, you wouldn't really want to locate it just under the crest of a hill, for example, where you can't see cars coming over it. So those are the kind of things that you start with uh, if you're dealing, say, with, at that level of design with uh, designing roadways and entrances. In this case, we're dealing with pedestrian circulation in a small site, but we're still trying to see what are the opportunities and what are the constraints? What do I, what, what's going to have to address as a constraint and what can I really take advantage of as an opportunity? So here's an example of one of those boards. You can see the biophysical, we've got topography, drainage, and in this case there's a list of inventory and then there's a list of opportunities and constraints. And I think this is kind of a good way uh, to approach it. If we pull this over here. So again, inventory, most of the slopes are around 3 to 5 percent. There are some exceptions. <coughs> elevation, looking at, okay, the elevation is the highest elevation on the site. In this particular case, there's a 14-foot drop across the site. And then things about parking lot site takes a lot of land located on the highest point, very obvious even at a distance. So you know, I would say even beyond this, that's a constraint, but the other conclusion might be it needs to be screened. And I think probably you'll see in this maybe somewhere else that that's addressed. So take a look at these examples. You know, they're not all perfect, but I think they are good examples of, again, how you can integrate text and graphics and photographs, uh, looking at summer shade patterns, um, sun shade patterns here, wind analysis, uh, where the prevailing winds are from, even in this case, drawing a kind of a using a section to talk about different types of plants and habitats that are uh, that are nearby. So again, we're not asking for this level level of detail in yours since we're focusing really on landform. So things that affect pedestrian circulation, the definition of space, the amount of exposure you have in the site, the visual sound, the wind, the sun, those are all things that are all important for your particular project. Uh, in this case, there's a section about architecture and structures, the cultural analysis. So certainly, as I mentioned a few times, you need to get to know the building. You need to look at the materials that are out there, look at pedestrian circulation. Again, probably utilities not important for us. Spatial qualities, yeah, that's and sensory impacts, those are all important things. 
and vehicular circulation, at least in the micro level of what happens in that parking lot, where their drop-off zones are, and even the fact that uh, I noticed when we were out there, there's a couple structures, shade structures, uh, over a bicycle parking area. So there's a location where people come on bikes, park, and then move into the space from there. So that's another opportunity there that you can think about. Okay, so I hope um, this was maybe a little helpful. And as I said, I will put a link uh, to this Prezi uh, onto Angel so you can go back and look at this at your leisure. I just thought I'd, I'd talk you through it and try and explain a little bit of that. It's really not a super complex thing. It's just a matter of first finding out what's out there, documenting that, and secondly, based on the program requirements and your design intent, draw some conclusions, analysis conclusions that will help you come up with basically a list of opportunities and constraints that will guide you and direct you as you move through the design process.